Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Are you curious about Creta 5? You want to take a look? Let's do that. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time here, thank you so much. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them and also be a part of a community of learners so that we can make each other stronger through our experiences. So thank you so much for being here. So Critic 5, there is no official release yet, but they do offer nightly builds where you can check it out and see what they're up to kind of at your own risk because uh, not everything is stable, but it's very interesting to see what's on the table. And I wanted to do that so we can all be aware and get excited together about what's, what's coming around. There are three main things that I wanted to highlight here just very quickly, and we can check them out. So number one, the animation workspace. This has been a big topic of discussion for Crit of 5, how they're going to enhance that. Some things that jumped out at me at the current nightly build are that you can now directly import video. And the reason that's cool is that previously you had to do it by frames, uh, where you had to go to your video editor of choice, you had to export frames with sequential ordering to them by you know, number order, and then you could come into Krita and you could use that uh, import animation frames to load them in by that order so you could work on them in the animation workspace, which is what we have right now. But this actually creates a shortcut for that where you could now do import animation video. And just to give you a quick sample of what that is, I can choose a video here and it works with MP4. Uh, that's what I've tested thus far because that's primarily what I work in. Uh, but it doesn't really seem to have a shortage of, of support there that seems to be pretty versatile here. Uh, so I wouldn't worry so much about your video format. Um, I'm going to test out something that's purposefully very, very short because it has to do a lot of work. It is leveraging FFmpeg, which is a really interesting open source uh, video tool. I'll put a card up uh, over there <laughs> so you can check out more about that if you're curious. Uh, but it leverages that to do a lot of behind the scenes video operations. And it's doing that here to parse out the individual frames and make it something usable in the animation workspace. It has to break it down to frame by frame because that's how you're animating. So I'm gonna say, okay, there is one second of video footage here, which is going to, I think, translate to 60 frames because that's what the video worked on. Uh, even that's probably gonna take a little bit of time here just as it catches up. Be aware that while you can load in longer videos, unless you have a water horse of a computer, it's gonna take a little while. It'll get there, <laughs> but um, it'll take some time. Now, I can't really speak to how unexcited I look in this picture, but just work with me here. All right, so we have now this, this layer of reference video, which we just able to do with a couple of clicks. We could import that with the new import feature. That's pretty awesome. And I can play through that. And this is kind of a really cheesy, uh, quick demo thing that I was working on. So pay no mind to that. But it's the principle of having the frames already here so that you can work on them. You didn't have to go through and export all the frames and then re-import them here. That's really cool, really useful. All right, so really exciting feature that's getting baked into the animation workspace. Another thing that I wanna cover and for this, I need to hop workspaces just back to the default. It's a little easier to see this way. Uh, let's make some more room here because we have to pull up another Docker. All right. Under settings, Dockers. There is this new thing I noticed when I was digging around, and it is called the recorder. And this is cool because it actually gives you the option to record what you're doing. And you might ask the question right away, like I did, well, why is that useful? Well, you could use it as a workflow tracking mechanism because you could use it to either start recording automatically or uh, you could start it when you want to, but it dumps the frames at the interval you set. I think the default here is five seconds, but you can set an interval for it just to dump frames while you're working on something. It's almost like generating your own time lapse. So you can either have the individual frames, which might be an interesting safeguard in case you want to look back along the line and say, well, you know, this went bad in a lot of ways, but I can go back and through my work history and actually pull out a piece of this that I want. That's one way. 
Um, but also you have all the frames that you could compose into a time lapse. Additionally, you can export the final recording of everything you've worked on, which you have some basic controls here, again, leveraging FFmpeg, uh, but you can export that as a compiled video, uh, full res, uh, to have your own time lapse compiled and done. So you could use this all within one suite of things within Krita. You don't have to engage a separate tool and record and do that outside of what you're doing. You could all have it baked in, which is a really interesting idea that you don't have to hop tools and think about multiple layers of things. So know it's there and give it a try. It only works, I noticed, in uh, in an 8-bit color scheme mode. So I like to work in 16. I had to dial that down. Uh, be aware that it will not work without that. You have to set that color scheme to 8-bit and then it works. All right. The last thing I wanted to mention, this is a really cool idea. Uh, I've seen other artists use a feature like this, but it's really great to see this actually getting baked into Krita again as one suite of a one-stop shop uh, option here. And the tool is actually this reference images tool. I'm going to click on that and it kind of becomes clear um, in, I think this is actually intended to use for the animation workspace. Otherwise, when you click on it, it doesn't do anything as you're seeing right here. So I'm going to flip back into the animation workspace. And now we have this extra pane over here and we have this, this panel specifically for the reference images. Now I did, let's see, I had an image ready. I'm going to just see if I can get it. You can copy an image into the clipboard, like just say I wanted to copy and paste it in rather than try to load it in. It might be a little quicker for you. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy an image over here. And then I'm going to use this clipboard button to do that. And I have my reference image here now that I can use. And I can drag that outside the image I'm working on. So it can kind of coexist alongside my image and it won't actually impact what I'm working on. And what makes this really even more cool is that I can save my animation in the, in the KRA file. I can make it just a working file that I can save and come back to, and it will maintain these references. I can actually save a reference file. It says here, you note it here, um, embed to KRA, but you can actually save your references separately as well in case you wanted to reuse those in another project. So there's a lot of really great stuff going on here. Um, again, this is leaping back into the animation piece of it, but it's alongside. And this is almost like your desk workspace. And this is the part that really matters. This is the animation that you're working on. So you kind of get all this extra space I can pull out and I could keep, you know, putting images out and around of what I'm doing and, and move in and around and work with that and kind of refer to that. This is a really great efficiency piece. <laughs> so that's really it. I'm sure there's more coming along. I am noticing some oddities because again, these are development builds. So don't get too intimidated by it if you try that out, but also don't be afraid to dig into it because there's some really intriguing things happening here. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for watching this and checking it out. Please um, do check out the other videos specifically about Krita so you can see uh, where we're coming from and where we're going. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. Consider subscribing. Um, so you don't miss out on the great projects that are coming up and leave a comment, ask a question, not just for me, but for the whole community. I really like seeing us help each other, not just coming from me, but again, the, the goal is community building. So thank you again. I will see you at the next video.